Hey, this is Ehab, and in this video, I am going to talk about four points tracking. So, um, here is a video um, with me holding the phone, and um, and I think this is a really interesting example because um, uh, of a footage because it provides a lot of uh, things that we need to be aware of when we do uh, four point tracking recording uh, of the footage meaning that before we go and shoot the video we need to be aware of some of the things that I explored as I uh, tried to do the uh, four-point tracking on this so one of the biggest problem here is that the circle of light goes and touches the corners and with four-point tracking uh, the corners are really everything that we need to rely on so in order for us to kind of do good tracking we need to have these corners to be cleared and one of the uh, troubles that some people get is when they use a uh, like a handheld screen uh, with a device that's all black and that's a problem because After Effects won't be able to see the corners um, in this in this case here I have golden frame so it's sort of like it does After Effects does see these points so when that circle of light comes and touches the corners or like washes out the corners we lose the data and then we have to go and uh, correct the data manually because there's no other way to do it which is not really as painful as I may make it sound but it's just something to be aware of the other thing is as I rotate that uh, phone some of these pixels start to get out of focus and that is also another problem that we need to be aware of but both these problems are not fatal the fatal problem is when I have my fingers crossing any line of those frames because once anything goes inside that uh, blank area then I would need to mask that and oftentimes that would take a very long time to fix the other thing that I uh, want to express here is that this, you know, it was all intentional for me to have that circle of light because it's really an interesting aspect because when I finish tracking, I use blending modes, specifically the screen blending mode, to make this to be on top of my visuals. Meaning that here is the example that I made. And you can see here, I tracked the same footage just for the, you know, for the fun sake of it. But you can see that circle of light going on top of those videos. Meaning that I managed to maintain that circle of light, which makes the video to be a lot more realistic. And of course, you can see here some tiny little mistakes that sort of like you can see uh, kind of obvious. But... Anyways, you kind of you can see now how the tracking sort of result would uh, would look like. But I'm gonna in like this is what this was just a tech demo for the uh, for the four point tracking. But in this video, what I'm gonna try to do is to make a practical um, a practical exercise, meaning that I'm gonna take this video here and I'm gonna try. Let me uh, fit into 100. I'm going to try to do something practical or something that's kind of uh, fun to do, such as, for instance, maybe tracking a an image on this wall and to make it look like it sort of exists. Okay? So, um, the first thing I'm going to do is to specify exactly where is the beginning and the end of that video. So, I'm going to go and start it here. Uh, it's really important to specify that because any footage that you don't need uh, you want to take out because that's going to take away f or that's going to in 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 uh, increase the amount of rendering time and i'm just gonna end it somewhere here okay the next step is going to be uh me in uh, sort of importing this image if i double click on footage here uh, before I put it down into the composition I get to see it and this is gonna be the image that I would like to import of course it's coffee so that's pretty awesome 
So this is the one that I want to uh, include. I'm just going to hide it for now. The next step would be going into the video and then go into track motion. So in the same way we apply the tracking for one point, instead I'm going to change from transform into perspective corner pin, which means four tracking points. Uh, if you haven't seen my video of one point tracking, you, uh, you definitely uh, would need to because that would explain how I work with the one point tracking. Uh, some of the mistakes that some people make is that sometimes they mix these points up. So you always want to have one, two, three, four. Upper left one, upper right two, bottom left three, bottom right four. So I'm going to track that uh, kind of coffee um, image uh, to be somewhere here and notice that this is terribly terribly track uh, terribly tricky but that's what I'm trying to do here to kind of in the video really introduce um, challenges and see if I can uh, figure out an ideal way to fix those issues and I'm going to increase the search box in a way that would be kind of useful. Now, anything that's like overwashed with the uh, with the bright pixels, that would be kind of really tricky. But I'll just try to make it really, really challenging for myself. And I'm just going to go and try to track on uh, this spot. And I think the search box would be this way I'm just gonna play the uh, video a little bit just to see so apparently here my uh, most concerning part is the uh, horizontal movement which means that my search box would be best to be going in with in with something like this where it would allow me to kind of take care of the uh, sideways movement and go here and um, see if I can track uh, you can also like you can say like you know what uh, there's nothing here for me to track uh, maybe you can track something here and since they're on the same plane you can later shift all the keys all the way here okay so let me just present how much of a failure this is gonna be this is gonna be really terrible and it's gonna be a really awesome um, example for uh, learning how these things could work or not I'm just gonna go here and widen the search box is really important all right so before I step into this I know that it's gonna be a, a landmines uh, kind of zone but I'm gonna try and we'll see how that's gonna go this is a it's a pretty good resolution uh, video taken with my phone um, it's like 6k or something it's kind of uh, amazing technology nowadays so now my process would be um, you know I always advise into uh, going into the um, the information here to change maybe RGB for instance here would be useless saturation would be useless so luminance which is the default is probably gonna be the uh, best uh, the best choice that's why I'm just gonna go and hit play I would be really amazed if this works all right, we start to have this dance here. That's pretty awesome. All these terrible mistakes, that's fantastic. All right, and let's stop this and call it done. So what I'm going to do now is uh, going back to the composition 
and in the composition I have this coffee uh, image okay and then uh, I would go back into the uh, tracking and then I would select the footage that is tracked go to edit target and I'm just gonna attach this kind of uh, photo just as a reference for uh, for me to be able to see how bad the tracking is so you can see here the beginning of it is like all right it's perfectly on the wall and now it's all going crazy it's just the worst so I'm gonna try now and uh, troubleshoot it by going into the corner So if I were to actually try or attempt to make this tracking on that wall to work, what I would do is I would go and post in uh, like tapes, green tapes or something that, or red tapes that would allow uh, After Effects to see those details. Because otherwise this is going to be really impossible to track. Uh, even this corner here is going to be useless. Maybe this one would work out, we'll see. And then once this, if this ever works out, what I can do then is uh, just shift all the points until I reach a really, um, an ideal um, spot. Let me just track it on this one. And now, you know, all I have to do is just to uh, select on that video again and then click on the tracking again and it would overwrite any of these information. And you can see they're still relatively in place. You can see you can see that they slide sideways sometimes. So now if I hit pause, it's gonna be the new movement that's gonna be uh, let me just edit target choose this and then hit apply and now you can see it's tracked a little bit better in the beginning but it gets really messy so anyways um, if we want to do the four point tracking um, it's basically just going with um, let me go here into the uh, let me just demonstrate quickly on the phone I'm just going to go here and import this. So if I were if you were, I were to do the four point tracking, pretty simple, I would just go to the track motion and then I would change that into uh, perspective and then I would drag from the feature box and I would just roughly place them in the beginning and then Later on, uh, I would just go and fix them. Uh, before I continue, I need to play the video just to see how crazy the movement is going. And obviously, most likely, the most concerning aspect is going vertically. So uh, I would click and find a good feature box. A good feature box would be something like this L shape. And then now I would go and modify this point exactly on the corner and this would be a bad search box what I need to what I need it to be like is something like this where it can handle all the ups and downs uh, but in this video I'm not gonna go through uh, manually changing the uh, the uh, keys uh, because it's pretty much close uh, pretty much pretty close to the one point tracking and I'm just gonna go here and make these higher and I can just select somewhere here and then zooming in would prompt me in there without any problems the first thing I would start with is by changing the uh, feature box again this kind of L shape and then I would go here and push the attach point and then something here 
and now that we have four points you uh, you need to be absolutely sure that you only increase as much search box as you absolutely need because otherwise it's just going to add way too much processing time but you gotta do what you gotta do it has to be it has to be uh, big enough to handle all the movement so it's not like you have to go really super economic on the processing but just something to be aware of and let's see how much we can get out of this and watch for this circle of light how it's going to ruin everything so that's gonna be fun you can see almost as if it's not playing actually that's how much processing there would be and I'm very sure if I were to reduce this one like I can stop it right now and say you know what uh, uh, this is kind of expensive I'm just gonna do this and you may notice a really instant change of timing or time for the processing you can see that that change here already made a really nice difference and you can see it's going pretty well we kind of struggle with it and uh, spend the time on it and then the circle of light if you watched uh, Lion King you would remember probably circle of life So you see that snap there? It sort of tried to struggle and to work with it. It didn't work, but it snapped back, which is great. And now what I can do is select here, zoom in, and let me go. Here is the frame where it was working just fine. Then I would click on um, page down to go one frame forward, page down, page down here is where it gets messy and now I would just with the left mouse button click and drag all the way up and by the way sometimes I do it this way in a way that I would just correct one of them and then if you click here it might correct everything afterwards but since it's just few frames and I want to also put more emphasis on how to manually make uh, these changes I'm just gonna keep modifying them manually And once you make that change, it would be saved automatically, of course. So in many cases, it would be really wise to stop exactly where things go crazy. And then uh, you can hit play again, and then that would continue. Of course, we're watching this one. It's kind of going okay, but probably that circle of light is uh, going and messing around uh, with all uh, other points. But let's say, you know, this is good enough. Let me just go and uh, <clears throat> import the uh, coffee um, image. And it's going to be so distorted. But that's going to be fine, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm going to go into the layer display here and. Uh, edit target and I'm going to choose that image whatever the name of it is and then hit apply and now this is going to be the result so let me just kind of play all the all the way until I get to this point here and hit N B is the beginning of that uh, work area and N is the end so now when I hit space it's going to play again so now you can see it's it's pretty straightforward it's it's a lot of fun and it's a really an amazing tool but how can we make it actually more realistic and more amazing uh, the first step would be considering um, taking the uh, uh, image on top and then hit T on the keyboard T for opacity or you can just unfold it from here but T would just push you right into the opacity and I would reduce the opacity a little bit and now you start to feel like this is actually seen on the phone it's not like super bright super saturated and whatsoever so I'm gonna give it 75 percent now when I play it, it it does feel like on the phone right and uh, I always make sure that you know I can go here and say like scale and I always avoid having it on 100 percent because we always need to maintain some area for the frame here so I'm just gonna put it on like 95% of the scale 
and that's kind of crazy uh, 98 I think is a is a good number um, usually I would go 98.5 um, but depends on the phone too that's really uh, important I think uh, 98.5 that's a pretty decent uh, kind of framing here and a lot of the phones would always have that frame again it depends on the phone you need to make sure that you match exactly how it would look specifically on that phone and now when I play this even though I do see that sphere of light or circle of light it's still not there yet I want the reflection to be on top as if it's actually there on top so what I need to do now is to go select on this uh, image that is on top and then go to the blending mode and make sure you have this activated otherwise you won't see your blending modes and then you go into screen and now you can see the reflection right on top of it and the subtle reflection here that's going on that is like beautiful subtlety here that's going on here uh, my wonderfully bald head you can see that reflection there that is pretty fantastic and of course I'm continuing forward where we don't have tracking points so you can just stay focused on this area here and this is the kind of quality that you don't see on TV in many commercials which which really bothers me like come on guys just um, just a little bit more information if you have or knowledge or skill uh, would go a really long way and um, hopefully you guys will be taking over the industry of making ads on TV someday and uh, you would remember me like alright Ihab I made the reflection so be proud of me and I will be laughing and say I'm so proud of you alright or crying more likely um, alright so this is the four point tracking alright and I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I hope this made things pretty clear and uh, simple um, it's really important uh, what I demonstrated there how many problems we have and if you were to actually make a video for something like this just go and sort of add like a red tape that's where we you see like in the big studios uh, where they would have a giant green screen in the back and then you would have all the X's on them that's the reason for it alright alright I hope you enjoyed this